from the top, 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 top of the Silver City Ballroom, it's the Dirty Laundry Show with Joey Clifton and the Meatball. So you people laugh here, some of you think I'm a little cuckoo. When are you people going to stand up for us? I do not feel safe. I take that as a threat. So let's talk about the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, but they can't. Don't make me make an excuse no. just yet. No, you're full of shit. Big you're close. full of shit. No, listen. He comes running out of the woods with a flamethrower, dude. <laughs> Whole life out here enjoying the journey. Sometimes I cannot help myself. I just tell people that they're stupid. We like to call him Ninjalito. That's his fame. Hello, Joe. This is uh, was the largest event held on the green. My estimates were 4,000 plus. Others said it was at least close to 5,000 people. Wow, that's fantastic. You want to get into it? Let's get into it. This episode, sponsored by Dunya. Dunya what? Dunya, Dunya good. Fresh halal food. You know, uh, we went to Dunya. It's it's in Waterbury. Right. So I know it's not Meriden. No. But it is uh, amazing. And if you ever go to Texas Roadhouse in Waterbury, it's it's off that same exit. Texas what? Yeah, on on uh, It's 584 Plank Road, Waterbury. And they have the ultimately best, is ultimately a word? Yes. The ultimately best falafel I've ever had in my life. Why are you giving up our spots for? Uh, well, because they paid. <laughs> because I told them how many people are going to go to their uh, place after listening to us. Uh, no, chicken shawarma, baba ganoush. Everything, everything was everything. on point. Done ya. And you know what's funny? Because we went to go there one time and we ended up at, uh, what's the place right in front of Sultans. it called? Sultan's. Sultan's, which was a Turkish restaurant, also very good, but not what we were looking for when you were looking for falafel right. and, and stuff. So anyway, Dunya, fresh halal food, 584 Plank Road in Waterbury. Tell them Dirty Laundry sent you. Yeah. And, dirty uh, Laundry sent you to Dirty Water. Yeah, they're not going to... No, they, I don't think they have Dirty Water in Waterbury, do they? No, Waterbury's nickname is Dirty Water. Is it? Yeah. Dirty Den, from Dirty Den to Dirty Water. <laughs> and wait, we, we we just learned one of the other, uh, was it the Silk City? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's Manchisi, right? Well, anyway, I sound weird tonight because damn coronavirus is <laughs> hitting you me. hard. Yeah, it's hitting me hard. But we'll get to, into that uh, yeah, yeah. in a little bit. Local news. All right, we're going to start it right off. Sunday night, lots of car break-ins. Hi. Elmwood Drive. Paddock Ave. Is this um, even news anymore? I, I I guess not. I guess it's not. Yeah. Should, should we not do car break-ins anymore? Well, I think maybe the weather's getting better, so uh, it's back on. Yeah. That's definitely back on. Shots fired. Tuesday was ridiculous in Meriden. Why? Um, at noon, there was a shooting at Meeting House Village. Oh, yeah? Right? And then 1230, Randolph Street. 1 o'clock. Old Colony Road, and then at 6 o'clock, also Old Colony Road. Now, one of the Old Colonies was the cemetery, and unfortunately right, right. it was a suicide, which I guess uh, we really haven't gotten any details on yet. So We're not going to talk about it anyway. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But uh, but the other three were actual shootings all throughout daylight hours. Why do you got to be so negative about Meriden? Um, well, it's a fact, you know. Oh, no, you can't. No. <laughs> weather's getting somebody, better. Somebody saw a unicorn on Broad Street. Yeah. Everything was great. <laughs> Weather was beautiful. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, let's face it. The whole point of pointing out all the shootings, number one, because they happen. Right. But number two, maybe somebody will wake up and do something about it. Well, you know, those those NI officers that are supposed to be walking the streets and stuff. I mean, I know right. you can't. It's got to be something bigger. There's got to be a bigger solution. Well, it's all about the management. But again, it's, uh, it's crime on crime. You're not going to get hurt. So there's a positive, right? Yeah, but we're still getting a lip for reporting all this stuff, which is kind of like, you know what? Well, we're not record journal. We don't answer to anyone, and this is it. It right. is what it is. Right. And if there's gunshots, there's gunshots. gunshots. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know. Right. We'll get to a solution maybe sometime in the future with somebody. Who knows? Yeah, the solution is to pretend. You know what's not solutionized yet? Wow, I'm coming up with some great words today. Right, right, right. Uh, the dog park still isn't fixed from when the drunk driver or whatever ran into the right. fence. I don't know what's taking so long. Now, if if, uh, if a drunk driver runs into that fence, right. does the drunk driver's insurance pay for the fence? Or does city just pay parks to put up a new fence? 
Uh, I would hope the city puts up the fence and then gets reimbursed. What if what if it's the same fence? What about the same? It's there's still costs. <laughs> there's still costs involved in uh, repairing the fence. Yeah. Well, so if you go to the Meriden Dog Park on Gracie Ave down at the end there, don't make sure you stop. Don't run into the dog park like many people have done. Uh, but don't bring your little dogs into Little Dog Park because the fence is down. Yeah, still, still, you'll see the the yellow tape hopefully. Yeah, and I think somebody put up a sign on the little dog door. Yeah, I think most people use the big park anyway. I mean, I've seen little dogs there too. Well, it depends but... on whether the big park gets all muddy yeah. and the dog, the little one gets all uh, still got some grass. Oh, on we it. went and saw the uh, the dog park in Cheshire is is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen the one in Southington. I mean, there's a, there's enough of them around. Yeah. Ours, is, ours is more on the small side, but it's still. No, ours is huge. I heard that there, there, uh, there's actually going to be a hopefully a dog event coming up soon on the green. I'm not going to give away too much, but uh, hopefully there'll be something having to do with dogs. I saw something about that. Yeah, that's good. Who was organizing it? I don't know. I don't know. But oh. we'll, we'll as soon as it's announced, we'll, uh, what we'll announce it. Definitely, the lunchbox closed. Did you? I. I, I Thought I heard about that, and then I somebody they posted it a while back. Did they? Did you I ever go so. there? No, I never was either. But I mean, I heard it was good. It's one of those places. It's it's typical Meriden. Some places close, and everyone cries how they went there. Same with the Whalers in Hartford. Yeah. Nobody they moved out because nobody went there, and now all of a sudden, oh, everyone's a fan. Yeah. Well, lunchbox closed, but Wendy's has breakfast now. Right. So I, I got to try that. Is that a drive-in okay. breakfast? Uh, you know, I went to the, uh, I went, to, I'm not sure if we talked about it. I went to Arby's for the fish sandwich because I saw the commercial on TV. Right, right. You love the cheese? Uh, you know what? It looked great on TV, but it was like cheese whiz. It, it wasn't, the fish sandwich was good. Just don't get it with the cheese on it. No. I mean, normally that would be good. But bring your own slice. Bring your own cheese <laughs> with you. Uh, Macy's last day is yeah. coming up any day now. I think it's they, the end of the month, maybe 20th. Yeah. And then we just learned this week that PetSmart is closing. Their last day is April 5th. Oh, that's sad. Um, apparently, they're sold out of just about everything that you can buy for your dog because everything was like half off or whatever, but not the food or the biscuits or anything like that. That stuff is still full price. Are we going to get blamed for it closing? No, I don't know why they closed, but they the place next door is empty too. Their location was a little bit weird. There was never any people in there. Why? Why is that weird? There's not a pet smart anywhere around. The closest one is what uh, Newington? Well, I mean Weathersfield. I don't know, but uh, that North parking, Haven parking lot's very inconvenient. It's jammed. Well, yeah, that that's a horrible ended, parking lot. Right, but. I mean, that's a great spot. It's a great location for businesses. I mean, Burlington does great. Marshalls does great. Big Y does it. The gym does yeah, but that Jersey Pet Mike's. Smart, that PetSmart looked closed, like, since a year ago. Well, no. You look because, at it, it's yeah. all tinted windows. You think it's closed. Yeah, but why would you? You wouldn't not go in there because you think it's closed. It's, it's got the sign outside, PetSmart. But you it looks closed, there. so why would you waste your time? No, I don't think people are that dumb. Oh, you'd be surprised. No, no. But anyway, I don't. I don't really know why they're... Why they're closing? So now I got to go to Petco. Obviously, they're not they're, making any money there. Pet, that's why they're closing. Petco is more more expensive. Oh, Neil's Donuts in Wallingford. Remember they sponsored us a couple weeks back. Yeah, the best donuts you could ever get. Well, they were opening a second you know, second location. Bert Smith doesn't think it's the best donuts. Huh? Bert Smith doesn't think it's the best. Donuts. Bert Smith hasn't been around since the election. Mm-hmm. Why? Why do you say that? Oh, 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 okay, oh. hint, hint, all right, I'm a little slow today, I told you I'm sick. There's a corona kicking in. But anyway, Neil's Donuts opening a second location, not in Meriden, they're going to Middletown. Why which, would they open in Meriden? You know what, we're going to we're gonna get into that on another episode, I want to get it, I want to kind of get into, I want to, I want to wrap my head around why, what's Entices a business to move into Meriden. I want to. I want to really wrap my head around that. Just and we wanna, dedicate an episode. We want to. Yeah, and I want to get some guests on that could help us with that. So I, I'm going to save it for another time. Can but we anyway, get some economic development. Guests? If if Neil's Donuts is too far for you in Wallingford, you will soon be able to go get them in Middletown, which is probably the same distance. You can take the bus. Another one that's uh, that's opening a second location. Every row, I yeah. got coffee in Middletown at Perks on Main. Mm-hmm. They're actually opening a second location. In New Haven. Excellent. I'm not really sure how well that's going to go because, you know, they're. I think they're going in where the old uh, Panera Bread was. 
on the uh, betting on New Haven over Meriden, so you know. Yeah, but I mean, you got so much competition there, and on top of it, there's Even a Starbucks. Still. There's a Starbucks on one side of their location, and then you have the the Yale bookstore on the other side of the location. I'm so, sure they did their market research. Uh, I, that's a that's a tall order there. It's not our problem, anyways. No. So anyway, in more local news, mm-hmm. I I don't want to say it because I don't know how to say it. The the big screw in South Meriden. The, go ahead. You you learned how to say it, didn't you? The Archimedes screw? Yeah, that's it. The Archimedes screw. Ar- Archimedes. So they put in this, it's it's a big, it's kind of like a dam. Well, it's a waterfall. Dam. With a big screw that generates power. Brum, right? brum, 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 and brum. And they were promised uh, a tax incentive right. for like the first just, couple of years. Just like every business. And this kind of upsets me because, well, it doesn't upset me because I don't care, but it's kind of uh, upsetting in the respect that everyone's, everyone was crying when they said that the city hall's messed up. There are no kind of initiative they give businesses. Right. And they said, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And you know who you are. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> there's another example. It's another example of a city hall screwing up and getting sued. Right. So, yeah. So what happened was they were promised a tax incentive. I think it was like 12000 a year or something like that. That's what the article said. Right. And then they were actually billed by the city for like 120000 right? something like that. And they're going to sue the city now because the city promised them something and... Right. Apparently, they can't no keep b- track of what they right. promise. Right. Apparently, nobody knows what happened, and we were talking about that with uh, with property taxes and the tax office at, at right. City Hall. It's all new people now. Uh, no excuses. No excuses. Well, no, you're right. There's no excuses. Should be but professional. It's that's part of the problem. Was we we're not really sure whether the new people were not trained effectively enough, or no excuses. We don't really know. Well, that, it's not an excuse. It's a reason. We don't know whether the the people as leaving. A, as a taxpayer, trained. I don't care about the reasons. I pay good money as a uh, taxpayer. You're so like full of yourself. You, you, you no. You, that's that's every taxpayer in the city. We pay good money yes, for the but, city to run well and yes. not be coming up with lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit after yes. lawsuit. Okay, but on the podcast, we're trying to figure out what happened. No, so what I'm saying you is, you know exactly what happened. You, you as a taxpayer, you don't care. Okay, I get I care. that. I care. Well, no, you you just said you didn't care about what. <laughs> you just said you didn't care about the reason you care no. about the fact of the matter. Yeah, it should okay. function properly. But but as as the dirty laundry podcast, I feel like it's our job to figure out where did it go wrong and expose that. We've been talking about this for three months. We already yeah. know where it went wrong and well, so no... where did it go wrong? Well it's basically there's a lack of communication on some kind of issues at the right. city hall. Right. And so, the taxpayers are paying for it. But a good a good example would probably be the people leaving didn't train the new people, correct? Maybe. Who cares? Well, well, again, we do care. We want to find out what happens so that way it doesn't happen anymore. You're just speculating. Which... Yes, you're absolutely right. I'm speculating. But when you say who cares, well, we do care. We, we care about finding out where it went wrong and exposing it so it doesn't happen again. So oh, yeah? the city doesn't get sued so anymore. What happened with the Eversource? Were there any lessons learned from that Eversource fiasco? Yeah, I'm sure somebody's on top of it to make sure it doesn't happen again. Whatever happened to the missing guns from the police department? Um, Anyone learn from that? I don't know. Whatever happened to all those missing guns? Did it ever money? happen again? Uh, it happens all the time. What, guns it, went missing recently? Not the same situation, but there's always inconsistencies. Yeah. We're saying, oh, we can audit it so somebody's keeping an eye on us. Nobody's keeping an eye on the city hall. You're such problems. a downer. No, it's problems after problems. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be a downer. Uh, same things with shootings. Like, oh, don't talk bad about the city. There's shootings every day. I can talk bad, bad about the city, and that won't make a difference if there are shootings every night. Well, I would hope we're making a difference. I would hope. We can pretend? Well, I, or we can, well, all right. Well, we're going to pretend that the city hall <laughs> keeps on screwing up. What, what difference does it make? Well, yeah. I mean, that's one business. The, the Archimedes Scrum was another business. It's a good example for other businesses not to move to Meriden. Yeah. Wow. And I've been saying that. Yeah, but... It's like the third month. Yeah, but like I said, we're going we're gonna to have people on that are going to try and let us know why a business... They're going to try to bullshit why this and that. Well, then they're not going to come on if you treat it like that. I'm not treating it like that. Yeah. I mean, I'll be happy to talk to those people. Yes, but if you're going to say everything that they say is bullshit and none of it's true, well, then why would they come on? They well, because there's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of pressure on yeah. this show to. Well, not no, there's no talk pressure. Openly. I mean, we, I mean, if how you many go- people are upset to, 
Yes, with but you. if you don't want to, if you don't want to care about something, that's something that you shouldn't care about. What, care what, about what? What uh, people putting pressure on the show? We're doing oh, this. I don't. I'll, we're doing this because point them up because we're having fun and we like it and we're trying to make a difference. I mean, that's why I'm right. doing it. Me too. Is to expose things to hopefully change things. So yes. when when. You know, somebody says, oh, businesses aren't going to move in because of your podcast, which is bullshit. But, I mean, the idea is to expose things so they don't happen again. Why, now, why we're, do we're not people, city officials. We can so. call those people professionals. Why do they come to us and tell us not to talk negatively? Why tell them not to report news? Well, no, it's it's not it's not that they're – how do I explain it? Explain they're, it. Like they're, M5. They're not – we weren't even supposed to talk about this. But anyway, we. it's not that they're – They're persuading <laughs> us to like skip over certain topics in a pretense that somehow we're hurting the business. Okay. So so the thought is by us constantly talking about negative things – Because there's no positive things to talk about. N- nobody would come here and move a business. Why would somebody live here? Blah, blah, blah. I don't blah, think blah. prospective but businesses listen to you, our podcast. If you are intelligent enough – to listen to what we're saying, yes, we're pointing out negative things about the city. Not even that. If you're intelligent enough to Google Meriden and click news, yeah. you'll see what's going on. Well, like like when I moved when I moved to Meriden, I chose Meriden because I figured it was a cheaper city to live in than Southington. Little did I know right. that long that term the mill rate was higher and the taxes were higher and, and everything keeps so on I, getting higher too. Right. So I bought my house at a great price. I, I couldn't be happier with how much I paid for my house. If that was in Southington, I would have paid way more. It's if it was crap. in if it was in Cheshire, it would be extremely expensive. But I wasn't intelligent enough at the time to look at the other things right. to see how much was you know, my car tax is gonna cost me every single year. Right compared to if I lived in a more rich town. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But anyway, getting back to the point, the point is we're going to keep pointing things out that people give us leads on and people tell us to talk about, maybe things that the paper doesn't report on, rumors, scandals. Look, we're not pretending to, to give you the facts, but if we say something that's true, it's true. If we say something that's a rumor, it's a rumor. <laughs> yeah, but you know? I caught some poop for saying that a city hall's messed up last time I was talking, I guess, with Mr. Cooley. Yeah. In that uh, episode. Yeah, but he's trying. Look, but that's not about him. Every, it's about the other people that came right. at me saying, hey, you don't know what you're talking right. about. Right. Everybody is, everybody is discouraged. Everybody's. Everybody's waiting for that first brewery to move into downtown. That's going to do nothing. Everybody is waiting and waiting and waiting and hoping. They've been waiting since 1980. Yes, and and they're hoping. And and look at the difference between now and 1980. It's what a does, hell of a lot better. It looks better. Do? What does hope do? It looks better. I'm just saying that people that are critical of us for pointing out the negatives, right? Are it's because they care. It's because they're hopeful and they want to hear us, they want to see things turn around. All right. Okay. My deal is we're going to point out all the negative in the hopes of stopping it, exposing it, so things can get better. End of story. I don't think we're pointing out negatives. We're pointing out the reality of what how's the city going, doing. No. All right. Those are realities. All right. Well, You're going to get the same thing if you Google me. Well, hopefully you didn't scare anybody off because I really want to. All those businesses that were lined up to get in here? I want to talk to one of those seven organizations that you say are promoting the city. And I want right. to I want to get down to it and see what, what worked in other towns. Why isn't it working here? Is it working here? I, I want to find all those things out. And we got to find out from a professional who actually knows the actual answers, not us. All right. Good luck. Not speculation. Yeah. No speculation but, here. But you'll have to take the day off. No. <laughs> uh, I'm taking my microphone with me then. Yeah. All right. Well, the finance committee meeting was, was meeting tonight. We couldn't go, but it looks like they want to wanna they wanna, they wanna raise the cap of 50% on the existing principal regarding the city's capital plan. So you know what this is going to do? That's why business won't move in here. Well, <laughs> they're going to raise the cap somewhere around $2 million. Hey, guess how much that banquet hall is going to cost on the golf course? Mm, around $2 million. Yeah, and you know what? If they raise the cap, you don't need eight people to vote it in. And that's why business won't move here. Okay, so uh, 
We'll have to figure out what happened. They were all supposed. They were also supposed to vote on whether the car wash was going to get approved, which we already know it's going to get approved on it North Colony there. Street. Don't worry about the five deer that live there. I was looking uh, at those woods, yeah. hoping to see the deer so I can count them because there were some, <laughs> uh, you know, the reports of number of deer was were kind of like uh, mixed. Yeah. So I wanted to have an accurate number. Um, something needs to be done with those woods because they look. Oh, crappy. it's it's it's. There's a lot of garbage. That's yeah. piled up over there, right. and it's just any business is you know good what? business there. I would, I, I hope one day that section of Broad Street looks like Wallingford. I hope so and, too. And it's slowly getting there. Yeah, I mean, we got the new CBS on, uh, you know, the other part. Right. You know, we got the new Dollar General. Duncan. A lot of people complained again. So, uh, so here's a good example. Right. Are we being negative? talking about people complaining about the historic houses that are being torn down for Dollar General and for corporations? Or are we being positive talking about how great it looks and there's more choices and you don't have to go all the way to Wallingford now to go to those stores? Yeah. Right? Right. So right. I, I hope it all... I hope they build another parts store and a in, Dunkin' Donuts next in, to it. In the words of, of our councilman and finance director, Michael Rohde, uh-huh. knock it all down. Knock it all down. He's not a finance put, put director. Nice, well, finance you know, committee. Director. Finance committee, right. But I, you know what? He got a lot of flack for that. I understand why, but you know what? Some of these houses are falling apart. They're, they're in disrepair, and landlords don't care because they're multifamily homes. The landlord's making their rent. The, the, the renter isn't going to invest money in what their house looks like on the right. outside because they don't own it. Right. So you know what? But it's, it's, it's not about... You know, residential areas. It's about the business areas first. Well, what's happening across the street? Uh, oh, across the street. So, they're, and they're, Colony. Yes. Yeah, so, I believe the address is nine through seventeen. It's actually two separate buildings on Colony Street, right across the street from the ballroom. Right, right. There's and been a fence like it, for a year now. It, it's been vacant for twenty years. Uh, the city is now going to foreclose on it. Okay, so there's a lot of rumors and speculation on what's going to happen here. How much will that process cost the city? I'm not sure, but I, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background. All right. So the guy bought it, the original guy bought it like 20 years ago mm-hmm. for, I want to say, a dollar sure. from, from the city. Right. He said, here, it's a dollar. And the guy promised he was going to put in like a jazz club with a restaurant and That'd a bar. Nice. Right. So the city said, you know what? Here it is. Pay us a dollar. It's yours. The guy sat on it for a good 15 years. Right. right. So then he stopped paying his taxes. I heard he was uh, rumors. I heard he was a hoarder and he was living in the building for a while. Really? Yeah. And then and then he just, you know, I don't know. He's disappeared or whatever. Yeah. So uh, he wasn't paying his taxes. I guess it was the city that foreclosed on him. Well, either way, the building, Probably. the building went up for auction. Right. So Uh the auction price, there is a local I'm not going to say his name because I don't not not that it's a secret, but I don't think he wants us saying his name. So there's a there's a a prominent landowner here in Meriden and he had won the auction. And again, I don't know these numbers, but it's a good comparison. So I want to say he won the auction for like one hundred sixty thousand. I don't know if that number is accurate. Okay, but he won the auction and. I guess there was a certain amount of time from the time it went on an auction block and he won the auction till he actually the paperwork went through. Right. On the final day of the auction, the guy who owned the building paid his back taxes. Auction done. So this poor guy who who bid on it and won the auction did not get it and it went back to the original owner. He's probably right? happy. Right. So now Couple years later, uh-huh. oh well, and actually, right after the the guy got it, yeah, he offered to sell it to the guy who won the auction, right, it's for like, for like double, triple. It was like six hundred and something thousand dollars, whatever, something like it was something stupid. Yeah. And the guy's like, "Why would I? You know, I just won it at auction for like one hundred sixty. Why would I pay like six hundred thousand? You know, right. you're full of crap. Right, get out of here." So, long story short. Uh, a bunch of Jewish people, real estate agents or, or realtor group from Brooklyn bought the building, right? They've been paying their taxes. Uh-huh. And, and I actually met with these people. They uh, Back when Juliet was economic development director, right. she had brought them across the street to the ballroom so they could see what, what we did to the ballroom in the renovation and how nice it looked. And Juliet's hope was that these guys would hire us to do the same thing to their place and just just make it bare bones but make it 
turnkey and ready for a business to move in. Well, we, mm-hmm. ne- we never heard of these people again, right? So here it is a couple years later, well, three years later since right. they've had it, and uh, the building's falling apart. The city had to pay Macri roofing to go and fix the roof. Because the taxpayer it, had to because, pay Macri roofing. Right, because the water was leaking through the roof and coming out onto the sidewalk, and it caused like a, a whole icy sidewalk last winter. So Macri fixed the roof. Now the facade is falling down for the past year. So we got a fence around it so nobody gets hit from the from the plaster falling. So the city's been hitting them up with the blight. You know, they've been getting a, a fine, a daily fine for at least the last year. Okay. They've also been getting fined left and right for, uh, well, for the roof, for the ice, for a whole bunch of things. So right. everything's, everything's adding up. Mm-hmm. So now the city is going to foreclose on it. So... That's that's good. I'm glad. That's and gonna be an expensive process. You watch. know, yeah, but you know what? I'm what? I'm I'm okay with the city spending taxpayer dollars. The to, city's to, up to get rid of beat landlords like this. So maybe somebody could actually come in and buy. It. It's a beautiful building. It's bare bones. There's nothing in it. It's beautiful brick building. You could do so much. You, I mean, talk about a place. A jazz club. D- a jazz club would be great. Talk about a brewery. I mean. It's it's the perfect spot for something like that. That's trip club. Re- regardless of whether yeah, regardless of whether somebody's going to come in or not, get you know give it to somebody who's going to do something with it. The guy who won the auction would have done something great with it. I know he would have. But if you look at the root cause of why this happened is because the city sold a building for one dollar. It did not put any stipulations. Obviously, didn't have any recourse. Yeah. To fix the situation, they just gave the building away, hoping things would happen. And so it would be hopefully, nice if it did. Hopefully, but there this has to time, be stipulations. There's a lot of tax breaks be, being given, right? Uh, about even 24 Colony, and there's nothing happening, right? People so, sitting on it, and a so lot of people from out of state buying building in Meriden right. and not paying attention to it. Yeah, but then you got guys like Henry Lee, who has been great for Meriden. He bought the old Middlesex uh, Community That's College. That's one great guy he out bought, of ten. Right? He bought. Actually, he, I just heard that he bought the old Arsenal. The cool. old that's, arsenal over on... That's uh, a new little building. Camp yeah. Street over yep. there somewhere. Yep, yeah. and he bought the diner, which is going to be Mel's Diner coming up in April. Right, right, right. Uh, Freezy Freeze. So, I mean, those are the types of building owners that we need. And like I said, the one that wanted that auction originally, I know he would have done something great with it. Maybe, hopefully, now he'll get the chance. But you talk about spending taxpayer dollars, I'm fine with it. You know what? Spend, Pay your lawyers to get these these idiots out of here, and let's finally do something with a building that's been vacant for 20 years. No, the process is obviously broken. Yeah. It's not about getting the building and then sitting on it, and we're back to square one. Well, let's hope. There has hope, to be some kind of plan. Let's hope that they learned from their mistake with selling it for oh, a dollar please. the last time, and maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. How's the Black Box uh, movie theater coming along? Uh, that's going to be probably about two years out. Yeah. yeah. About um, two years, uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that is that. Wait, we talked about the foreclosure. We, I'm going through my notes here because we have so much to get to. Right. Uh, and I keep on distracting on it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You know what time it is? What time is it? Dirty Laundry. Okay. Donald Cariotti Jr. Mm-hmm. You know who he is? Is he related to Trump? No. So he owns CDI which is a snowplow and hauling. He's a contractor. His office is located in Wallingford, right? Mm -hmm. He just pled guilty to one count of outstanding or impeding the due administration of the IRS. That's some bullshit charge. I have no idea what that is. Well, I know what it is, but the charge just sounds really strange. So it carries a maximum sentence of three years. He allegedly scammed the IRS up to like one and a half million dollars in employee taxes. So the whole deal was he was saying his employees were private contractors mm-hmm. and he was 1099 in them. Okay. So that way he wouldn't have to play, pay the employee tax when really these people were employees not paying the employee tax. So did these people bring this along? Did they report him to IRS? I'm not sure who reported it, but when they did an audit a couple of years, uh, well, they ended up doing an audit like I think in 2017. And on top of all of that, they found out he he bought one of those really expensive cigar boats, the racing boats, right? Uh, and put it in as a business expense for his contracting business. <laughs> well, maybe he gets needs to get to one of the islands really quick. Well, here, why do we care about this? Why? Hey, was he convicted or was he just charged? Uh, he was char- He's going to be sentenced in June. So this so, is not. Oh, no, okay. this is not allegedly. He he uh, he's guilty. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Why do we care? 
Mm-hmm. Well, he sits on the Meriden Planning Committee, sits on the Meriden Aviation Committee, and he's a preferred vendor for the city. So that's why we care. Now, yeah. so, and apparently his, uh, his membership to the committees, the membership expired, and he hasn't been named, you know, they haven't yeah. renewed his membership, right. if you want to call it that. But he's still kind of there. He's still listed as a vendor. This is all kind of new. It just happened a couple weeks ago. And he's going to be sentenced in June. Like I said, he could be up to three years max in jail. So there's nothing in the charter that says how to get this guy off of those committees. Right. But if you're convicted of a, of a felony, you can't be on those committees. You can't hold any public office. Are you sure about that? I'm positive about that. Yeah? 100%? So, 100%. You can't hold office. I don't think office. you're right. Why? I think there's people on committees and commissions in Meriden that are felons. Mm, who? I don't know. Who? You gotta look into it. Okay. Well, they're not supposed to be on, on anything if they're felons. It's I, a recent nomination, too. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll have to look into that one. Yeah. You have to tell me off the air. Yep. But anyway, so that's the deal with this guy, uh, Donald Cariotti Jr., so keep an eye on that and see what happens. I'm pretty sure they're they're gonna get rid of him. Well, they won't have a choice if he goes to jail know. in June. But I think the <laughs> commissions and committees in Meriden, um wasn't there like a racial case back in the day, and the guy's still on some committee. I don't know. There's a lot of things. If you look at those names, you'll you'll recognize them, especially if you Google them. There's a new park naming committee. <laughs> uh, I don't know what parks need to be named. I thought they all had names, but. Oh, yeah, uh, that was something uh, I think uh, Batista started, no? Yeah, but I don't know. Because uh, stuff was getting named without her approval. Yes, yeah, so apparently people were naming... City stuff without city's knowledge. Right, and I mean, I, I, I don't see that being an issue, but hey, all right, we got a The more committees, committee. the merrier. The more committees, the merrier. That's, that's exactly right. Right, right, right. National News. All right, it's not really national news, but our new our new Hartford line here, right? I know I, I shouldn't have hit the button if it wasn't national news, but our new Hartford line. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you remember, we got these trains from Massachusetts, right? Uh-huh. And they're thirty years old. They're thirty year old trains. They and, weren't compliant, right, with ADA. Right. So there were no bathrooms on them when they first started, and then they had to redo something and blah blah blah. Anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Come to find out mm-hmm. that we leased these trains from Massachusetts. We Excellent. didn't buy them. They're not ours. Yeah. And now that the Hartford line is up and running, and actually I think the DOT just got awarded a huge grant to work more on on the uh, – because right now from Hartford to Springfield, there's only one track. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, down this way, there's two tracks, mm-hmm. which makes a, a huge difference. And a lot of people have been complaining that, um, and I know this, a lot of people have complained yeah. that the trains don't go late enough at night. I think in the summertime, they'll go to 11, will be the last train out of Hartford. Yeah. Um, but you can you still know, take Amtrak now. I Yeah, but I'm sure that it's, it's really spread apart, the amount of time. I mean, you get out of a people place at 11 o'clock. People want to drink in New York and come back late. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So anyway... Massachusetts wants its train back. Yeah, yeah. They want all the cars back. They don't want to, you know, we're leasing them. And they said, okay, the lease is up. We don't want to renew the lease, and we want our cars back. Excellent, excellent. So the guy in charge of Connecticut DOT, he's like, well, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they'll have no problem extending it. They can use plow trucks in the the summer. (laughs) They're going to extend it. Meanwhile, Massachusetts is saying, no, no, don't even think of trying to extend it. We want our cars back. Yeah. So our DOT guy is frantically searching for trains to buy. Speak of the devil. There beep, it is. Uh, Wait, so did CTDOT fix the trains to make it ADA compliant? I would assume so. So they improved leased uh, cars then? I guess. That's excellent. Sure. Yeah, and maybe that's why Massachusetts wants them back. Right. Who knows? So I'm not really sure. They didn't give a time frame on when the lease is up and when this is all supposed to happen, but Mass wants their trains back. Here go all the fancy jobs people from so, Maryland had in New Haven and uh, Hartford. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, there it is. That's yeah, not yeah. a sound effect. That's that's the real train outside. Yeah, um, we timed it just right. Perfect timing. Coming in loud. <laughs> yes, it is. So um, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, he's going to do everything he can to get some new trains in there. Hmm. 
<laughs> and Meriden <laughs> was bragging how great it was. TOD district <laughs> All on right. the bus. On to the coronavirus. Speaking of TOD district <laughs> <in the> bus, <laughs> what? remember when we had those shadows for like two weeks? Yeah, I don't know what happened to those. We had shuttles for a little while there. Right, right. It was but, like two, three years ago. Yeah, but I think there was, uh, I don't know. Old people get a shuttle. They get like three buses. Yeah, the seniors have their own shuttles. Yeah, what about the young people that are tired <laughs> walking up the hill? Walk. Walk. Get a bike. Get a bicycle. Oh, I know. That's age discrimination. <laughs> Coronavirus. What about it? 99 people in the U.S. so far out of 13 states. Keep it under 100. Yeah, we're keeping it. And it's weird because it's all around Connecticut, but not in Connecticut yet. Yeah. We got New York. We got Mass, Rhode Island. Uh, nothing in Connecticut yet. So I, I give it till Sunday. I'm going to say Sunday we'll probably have our first we're case. We're going to bet on this? All right, put in your bet in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but All right, so let's see what the facts are. And I don't want to go too far into this because it's gotten <laughs> blown up. There you go. It's gotten blown up already. Yeah. But it's basically just another strand of the flu. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's highly contagious. It's right. more contagious. Uh, it will live on a surface, mm -hmm. but it doesn't live very long in the air. Right. Okay. And somebody had said that it's probably going to end up turning into the same way everybody gets the flu shot. Yeah. Eventually, this is probably going to stick around for a very long time. It'll take a while to and, develop the vaccine, though. Right. They'll end up, yeah, it's, it, I think eight to 12 months for a vaccine, which Isn't they're working on. Isn't that place in America working on it? Protein mm -hmm. science? I'm not, uh, yeah, I believe protein science is, but then they were also, uh, oh, there's a lot of them. They're testing them in Rocky Hill. Oh, cool. Uh, on what? Do they need volunteers? I yeah I know we could probably go and get tested. No, I don't have a fever. You ever see those memes? People posting the Lysol bottle with yeah. the. Uh... Well, I went today to get. I have spray for the studio. It's like uh -huh. a Lysol spray. I get it at the dollar store and I spray the screen. You know, because when you're sick, it goes all into the microphone and everything, and none. Nothing. I mean, one lady was buying like seven things of alcohol because they didn't have any hand sanitizer or disinfectant spray. I think it was because the weekend's coming up and she's ready to party. <laughs> yeah, so she's drinking rubbing <laughs> she's alcohol. Drinking rubbing alcohol. Uh, yeah, so people are frantic. People are buying. You know, it's just ridiculous. I'm not going to say it's blown out of proportion because it is very serious. It's more serious for right. older people mm -hmm. than younger people. It doesn't seem like the kids are really getting it. Or if you're a healthy person right. and you catch this coronavirus, there's like an 80% chance you're going to be fine. Do you think it's okay? China trying to kill our seniors, no. our beloved seniors? No. It's the older people that maybe they have a heart condition. Don't maybe they have emphysema. The they have other things. So it's it's definitely not something to take lightly, but it's also not something to, to panic about. Now, if you're in Italy, mm -hmm. that's a totally different story. Uh, you know, and it's weird. We were talking. Uh, one of our friends is going to be on here. Her brother is in Italy, mm -hmm. and he's making sausages. He's kind of, kind of scared and freaking out. One of my friends is in Italy, mm -hmm. and basically said uh, that they've closed the gyms, the movie theaters, the public and, places, and the malls. Congregation, but they places. still have to go to work. And you know, he's kind of not really stressing over it. Where if that happened here, you know, everybody would be freaking out if the if the you know, do you think people in the U.S. Everything. will get some time off from work? That will never happen. No, and then everybody keeps saying, "Oh, well, you know, don't fly anywhere." My sister's actually going to Florida tomorrow, uh -huh. and my mom's like, "Oh, don't fly anywhere." First of all, the, I learned that the airplanes have one of the best uh, filtration systems. Circulation. They have system. these big HEPA filters, and it, it circulates the air like twenty or thirty times an hour. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's probably a lot more safe. And healthy on an airplane than yeah. these cruise ships. They just uh, stopped a cruise ship in L.A. They won't let them. They won't let them dock. Right, right, the right. People are stuck on there. They have a couple cases on that thing. A couple cases of Corona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of that, it's it's crazy that people are this stupid. Like like Robbie DeRosa says in our intro, thirty eight percent of people that were polled mm -hmm. are not buying Corona beer. Where were they pulled? Alabama? <laughs> I don't really know. They weren't drinking Corona at the beginning. But, but then they were saying that uh, 30% the sales have dropped 30% at Chinese restaurants because people are afraid. Meanwhile, they're buying all their crap from Amazon <laughs> that's all made in China. People are buying the face masks. Those are made in China. Um, it's just it's, – it's getting out of control. And like I said, you know – if anything, it's teaching us how we should really clean our hands. Right. You're supposed to 
You're supposed to stand six feet away from a person and so make they your don't own spread. masks out of your socks. No, <laughs> out of your jock strap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but really, it's and a lot of people were saying, well, if everybody's buying all these cleaning products, how dirty were they before? <laughs> right. You know, so we're gonna have that's uh, a panic. We're gonna have some people on. Yeah, it is a panic, but you do have to be aware. You don't have to panic about it. Don't go crazy about it, but you should be aware. Hmm. You know, uh, you think there's some things the government's not telling us. Oh, it's an inside job. Ooh. <laughs> Our city manager did a press release about yeah. coronavirus. Yeah, what did he say? They had a link. What did he say? And the link led to an uh, advisory to wash your hands. Really? Yeah, it was, it was great. The proper way to wash your hands? No, just wash your hands often. <laughs> All right, I got a couple things. Uh, this Friday, March 6th, uh -huh. which is, you're probably listening to this on Friday, so the Old Church Concert Series at the First Church on Colony Street in Meriden. Check them out. Dinner at 6 o'clock, music at 7. There's free parking at the 24 Colony Street parking garage. And this is the first Friday of every month mm -hmm. at the First Church. Follow the signs. Um, this week is Brooke Dugan, the Banshees, and the Bargain, which is a new group that was Frank Cretelli. Everybody knows who Frank is. We actually right, right, heard right. him on the radio today. Right. The song's pretty good. I, I never... Uh, well, we got to plug in Robbie's show now. Yeah. Well, Robbie DeRosa with Homegrown on, uh, on ESU, uh, he played a little bit of uh, The Bargain earlier today. Yeah, it was so, great. Anyway, you got to listen to it. Yeah, so that's, to that's happening music. the first Friday of every month. So check that out. I think they, it's like a, they're asking for like a $5 donation. I heard the food was really good. Yeah. You got to go in at 6 o'clock. You go in the back and, and eat, eat some dinner. food, chow, yeah. listen to some bands, one, drink some claws. This coming Thursday, one week from today, Maloney's Pub is hosting a fundraiser for the St. Patty's Parade, 7 o'clock. I thought they already had money for St. Patty's. Uh, well, they're still raising money. They're going to be <laughs> raffles and 50 50s. I'm raising money for St. Patty's too. Karaoke. Well, it's the 47th St. Patrick's Day Parade, and apparently it's a go nice, for nice. Saturday, March 21st. That's good. Uh, I hope they, I hope somebody listened to my suggestion from last week of changing the direction of the parade. Please, and walk up the hill. <laughs> well, no, you wouldn't even make it to the hill. You don't have to walk right. up the hill. The most people wouldn't even make it to the it hill. It would turn left on Colony and hit right. up the bars and, and all of that and get some beer. Well, I did see an ad on social media looking for bands and stuff and looking for members that want to march in it. I, I think it's a little bit late for that, but hey, Maybe. good luck. I hope. But didn't so, the schools want some money to do it? That's what somebody said. I never heard of... Because you suggested before. it, and I think we got some feedback. Somebody said that schools are looking for money to participate in yeah, parades. I've never heard of that before, but then again, it's Connecticut, so I would not be surprised. And it's Meriden, too. Yeah. Weird stuff happens here. Sunday, spring ahead. Sunday, yeah, Sunday, I'm, Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I think I'm done. Yeah. Make sure you check out Dunya in Waterbury. Thank you for sponsoring us. Great halal food, falafel, <laughs> shawarma, baba ganoush. I like saying that word. Uh, That's a great, great band name. No, they're excellent. It's it's the same exit in Waterbury for, for Texas Roadhouse, but you go straight and right behind Salt Hands. Yeah, you got to yeah. check that out. You'll love it. So make sure you spring ahead Sunday. Uh, what else? Email us, dirtylaundryct at gmail.com. Thank you to everybody that emails us and gives us tips. Thank Follow you. us on Twitter and Facebook. I've been up on the Twitter thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and make sure you listen to us on anywhere you get your podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, all of that stuff. Bye-bye. Wow. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs>